So often when we talk about getting the right golf clubs for your bag, people say, well, I must go and get fitted for that 500 pound driver. I need to go and get fitted for those thousand pound irons. When really most golfers use a putter 30 to 40 times around and a wedge almost as much as that. So let's do it. Well, let's do it now. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're gonna to talk to you about how to make sure you get the right clubs for your golf bag, especially the most important clubs. Mr. Dennis, how are you? Very good, yourself? I'm living the dream, Chris, some would say. Oh, yeah. So, Chris, you're gonna talk us through, would you say this is the most important club in the bag? Yeah, so probably the, the club you're gonna use the most, well, you're definitely gonna use it the most in a round, even on your good days. Uh, but. This is a club that not a, people, not a lot of people get fitted for, they don't spend much time on it. As soon as I or anybody says, you know, they pick up a putter and go, oh, how much are the Scotty Camerons? And you say 300 pounds, oh, how much? Absolutely. Again, how much, every time you mention a putter's over 200 pounds, they say how much, but they'll happily go and spend time and money up to 500, 600 pounds on a driver. Absolutely. And Chris, you do a lot of putter and wedge fittings here at Waterfront Golf where you are based. Correct. So you're going to talk us through how to make sure you get the perfect putter for your bag. Then we're going to go over to the short game area and I'm going to do the same with wedges. Oh. So what's the first thing you need to look at, Chris, when you are looking at buying a new putter, maybe moving into the new season like a lot of people will be now? Black Friday sales are on. Oh, yeah. Or they will be soon. Yep. What, you, what do you need to look for? First of all, the main thing that I look at is the length of the putter. So making something, uh, making sure something is the right length. So if it's long enough for you, I see too many people with short putters, postures over, start to cut across the ball and have no chance of making putts or more luck than judgment. And that's not essentially just down to your height, is it? Or how long your arms are? It can be down no, to your posture, your Down technique. to your posture. If you, you might be somebody who's more bent over, you'll see people on tour like that. You might Friend be, of the channel, Rachel McQueen, puts like that, doesn't she? Correct. You might see someone who's pretty tall and upright in the posture. Again, you need something that's going to suit how you stand to the ball. If you're not going to have a lesson, you're not going to change. Obviously, you might not need to, but just get something that suits that and get the right length to the posture that you feel comfortable in. The, the next thing we want to look at is get a head design that suits your eye. If you have a putter that you don't like the look of, if it sits down, you know, a lot of people, a lot of mid handicappers get advised to get a, you know, a, a mallet putter because they're more forgiving. If you sit that putter down and it doesn't look very nice, you're not going to make a nice stroke. You're not going to enjoy it. You're always going to be fighting that. If, you know, we've had people come and they go, I've been told to buy this. I've always hated it since I've had it, but yet you spent 300 pounds or 200 yeah. pounds. So the look of that is something, again, when you go to talk about toe hang or face balance putters, it's very much down to your stroke. So don't get into the myth of, okay, if I've got a really big arcing stroke, I might need to have a toe hang putter it is very much not just about that a lot of people get fooled into that that's more of a myth than it is a fact so when you go to get a putter fitting make sure you're asking the right questions and see and hit putts and see how it does the final thing that i would say is you need you can get different things on a putter that will help you aim better without obviously you knowing so some people will have a line on the putter some people will have nothing, some people will have a dot, some people might have three lines. It's all down to what you like to look down on that putter and there's different configurations that will help you aim the putter better without having to change anything in your technique to hold more putts. Clearly this one doesn't work for me. But we need to think about that. So get the right length, get a head design you like, and then also get something that helps you to aim as accurate as possible. The rest of it, there's different weights and there's different fields, there's also different shafts. Again, you need to get out on a putting green, you need to hit some putts, get a feel for what suits you. A putter, unfortunately, is not just gonna fix your stroke magically overnight. That's what you're there for. Correct, that's what I like to think. But if you get something that's the right size and fits you, you've got more chance of reducing three putts. One thing I'd add there, as well as make sure you get the right grip. So often I've been caught out using the wrong grip. I used to think, oh, a nice thick grip will take my hands out of it. It means I'll stroke more like Jordan Spieth. It means I will hold more putts when realistically, I put a lot better by using a thin grip, which is why I really like the thin grip that comes on. 
Is it a matador that one, Chris, or is it called something else? A I hammer? I believe it is the matador. The Scotty Cameron fans will be all over me here for not knowing what that is, but... But yeah, a lot of people, the fad at one point was to go really big grips because it took your hands out, but what I've seen from a lot of people over the years is they got a bigger grip and then they just gripped it tighter. They didn't yeah. grip it looser, and then from there, they still had a stroke like Zorro. And also make sure you're not looking at buying a putter in a shop where the hole has a little bit of a sieve or a colander down into it, because I've seen that so many times in some of the big name shops, so you hold yeah. everything. I hold it every, I hold it all in the shop. Yeah, oh, I hold it with every putter because it's designed to do that. So really get out there, start to see that you can get on a putting green, hopefully, depending on the conditions. If not, when you're inside, you're testing that on braking puts and on flat puts and really getting a feel for it. There we go. So guys, that is a short game expert's analysis on what you should look for when buying a new putter. Let's get over onto the chipping green and see what we need to look at when buying a new set of wedges. So guys, now we're gonna talk about wedges and what to look for when buying new wedges moving into the new season. The first thing I always want to look at is gapping from your irons. Look at what degree of lofty pitching wedges and try and match something to that if you can, ideally get on a track man, get on a launch monitor and see how far a full shot goes. So for that, I've got a 50 degree. Usually you'll find a gap wedge because there will only be one bounce option. It will be quite a low bounce option. So this is a 50 degree, eight degree bounce F grind. Now I don't only use this for full shots. After having numerous lessons with Chris and finally listening, I also use this around the green so I can actually play it for these long chips. And you can see it comes out nice and low and chases towards the hole. Go on then. Oh. You have to make sure that you are comfortable chipping around the greens with this club as well. You don't just want to go and get a real big heavy duty forgiving wedge if you do want to use it around the greens because it won't be that easy. You also want to make sure that you have a nice array of wedges. So you'll see here that I have a 50, a 56 and a 60. For me, that's just a nice gap. The 56 degree is a 10 degree bounce with a standard grind and the 60 degree is an eight degree bounce with an M grind. I have to check those because I'm not a short game expert and I don't always check them, but Bob Vokey told me these were perfect for me, so I believe him. So the 56 degree you may call a sand wedge. I don't always use a 56 degree out of the sand, so make sure you have that in mind when you do choose your sand wedge. I'll use a 56 degree when I'm somewhere like this in a bad lie. I still want to be able to manipulate the club. I still want to be able to open the club up. So the S grind is okay for me there because it allows me to do so. But if I use too much loft here, then generally I wouldn't be able to get the distance that I wanted with this club. So it's important that you make sure you get the right bounce, not just for the club, but for the shots in question you want to play with that club. So you may be saying, well, James, that's all good and well, but what club do you use out of bunkers? I'm sorry, Chris, I'm going to have to say it. I generally like to play my most lofted club out of bunkers, which is in fact this one. <laughs> it's a 60 degree. It's got eight degrees of bounce. You can see that the sole here is absolutely massive and that helps me glide through the sand and play the shots that I want. So guys you can see here in a bunker we've got a short sided shot and this is very much why I like to use plenty of loft in the bunkers. I've made sure I've got enough bounce on this club for my game. If I don't have enough bounce and the leading edge could dig in and we're not going to get it out every single time. It's quite a difficult shot but I still feel like I can get that out every single time play it just as I want to. Another thing about making sure you get the right wedges, I see some people who don't always match a wedge set up. And for me, I have to have matching wedges. I have to look down at them and see some form of consistency, be that it be in brand, be it in color, even with the shafts that are having these, but make sure you don't have too many wedges or not enough. The big thing that you should leave with having had a wedge fit in is having the right number of wedges, the right wedges for your game and the right loft and bounce to help you in predicaments like that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And I really hope that video has helped with you choosing your most important clubs moving into 2022. If it has, smash that subscribe button. Go and follow my mate Chris Dennis Golf because he's he's working. You're doing all right, aren't you? You're trying quite hard. And apart from that, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.